How do you do, Buckaroo? So my last one from that Brew United pack that I've been doing beer from over the last couple of weeks, uh, the, the Boston Lager. I'm going to save this one for last because, well, I've had it before, man. But I do want to read just a little bit from their website if you're unfamiliar with this beer. 5%, 30 IBUs, availability is year round. Our hop varieties are Hollertown Middle Fruff and Tetanang, Tetanang, or Noble Hops. Malt varieties are Sam Adams Two Row Pale Malt Blend and Caramel 60. They call it Deep Amber to Golden. I'm going to call it closer to Golden than Deep Amber personally, but they can call it whatever they want. This beer, this is the beer that started it all off. Samuel Adams Boston Lager helped lead the American Beer Revolution, reviving a passion for full flavor brews that are robust and rich with character. Since 1984, Sam Adams Boston Lager has used only the finest hand selected ingredients to create this perfectly balanced, uncomplicated, and complex original brew. Yeah, you know what? I'm not sure how you can deny that. There were a lot of players early on, but I'm not sure how you can deny it. Uh, whether we could disagree over who was first and who was second and who was third. The truth is that really doesn't matter because Sam Adams, they might not have been first, but they were clearly a major player and really helped spur along what became the craft beer movement. It started out as something else, and then, you know, then it sort of snowballed. Very likable beer, very nice on the nose. Uh, excuse me while I try to get comfy here. <laughs> Little earthy, herbal, little peppery on the nose. Uh, trying to remember how old I was when I first had this. I was probably, I'm guessing it was probably 88 the first time I'd had it. I do remember thinking at the time, though, it's, a, it's a, just a darn wonderful beer. seems tame by today's craft beer choices uh, but you know we shouldn't overlook beers like this we shouldn't call beers like this mediocre or meh just because there's so many other styles available now not every beer has to have a hundred ingredients in it not everything needs to whack your palate out of joint one way or the other sometimes a beer just needs to do what it's supposed to do be crisp be clean be refreshing and taste good here you have a solid beer of the style that does everything right. I don't think there's anything off in this. Unless there, unless there are definite off flavors or something off-putting about the beer, we should never refer to a beer as mediocre, in my opinion. Just because your taste buds doesn't get it doesn't mean it's mediocre. Just because it doesn't carry a 100 ingredients doesn't mean it's mediocre. Just because you didn't have to stand in line for four hours and brag about it all over social media doesn't mean it's mediocre. A solid beer style should never be overlooked or be referred to as mediocre, in my opinion. <laughs> it's just frustrating when you say, oh, that's just a mediocre beer. That's just a mediocre beer. But just because they're making solid beer styles and not throwing everything but the kitchen sink in the beer does not mean they're a mediocre brewery. does not mean that's a mediocre beer. It may mean you may not have the palate to understand the simplicity of a beer done right, but doesn't mean it's mediocre. You know, I, I'm not a chef by any means, but the chefs that I really, I love to cook at home. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad actually was a chef. Um, so I learned to cook from him. And, uh, you know, I've learned that not, not every dish needs a hundred ingredients. I think it's become a trend to add a whole lot of things into food, but sometimes the best, the most simplest dishes uh, the most simplest dishes are the ones that are the best is what I was trying to say. This is a solid beer. I got to say, I think the last time I drank it, I may have, you know, kind of un unfairly uh, categorized it. But it's uh, at, at this moment, I got to tell you, it does what a beer is supposed to do. It's crisp, it's refreshing. I'm, I'm trying to transport my mind back to, say, 1984 when this first came out. And, and I had to think it just had to blow people's minds at the time that, that how crisp and refreshing a beer like this was. A beer that didn't contain corn, that didn't contain rice, that didn't contain all those adjuncts that make 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 the 
make the, the loggers of the time just, just lazy and just lay there. It does have that nice lingering finish too. Yes, sir. I don't know. This is tough today. Hold on. <laughs> My stool's not working for me. Oh, that didn't work either, anyways. Um, but it is good. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes, it, you may like uh, hop your beer. That's fine. You want? I only drink IPAs, Tom. That's fine. I only drink sours, Tom. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, man. The problem is just because this beer doesn't work for you doesn't mean it should be referred to as mediocre. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. Oh, excuse me. My very first beer of the day. Holy crap. Ooh. Excuse me. I hope I didn't get it on you. Hey, I am Tom the Beer Whisperer. I hope you all are having a great weekend. Mine is doing okay so far. And I was even using the Sam Adams glass. How about that? 